My name is Julian Evans and I own a small woodland in Hampshire and one of the things we've needed to do in that woodland is to thin out the trees because as trees grow we can't just leave them to grow thicker and thicker and this woodland that you can see behind me here has many trees that need to be thinned out and really we want to do that for two reasons. One is to favour the best trees so that they can grow on and grow well. The other is, is, is to introduce more light beneath the canopy onto the ground floor so that we can have more bluebells and primroses and all the lovely spring flowers that we like to see. But how do we identify which trees should come and how many? Well, I can introduce a rule of thumb. The first is that usually when you do a thinning you take out about one tree in every three. You don't need to be mathematical about this, every third tree up a row or anything like that, but roughly have in mind one tree in three. Now I've got here a traditional Kentish billhook, which is just what we can use to mark the trees that ought to come out from just this area where we are standing. The tradition is that you put a blaze on the tree on both sides so that that can be seen easily by the tree feller operating with his chainsaw coming to cut them through. So that tree is now destined to be felled and removed. In the old days when this was done with an axe there would often be a crown on the back of the axe and if this was um, the, uh, the State Forest Service, the Forestry Commission, they would then make a mark to show that yes that was an official tree because otherwise somebody else could come along and put their blazes in on, on any trees that you as the owner didn't want to have cut. So that's one tree, it's leaning, it's contributing nothing, it has no future, so it's best cut down and removed. But if we now look to my left hand side we can see there's one other dead tree, then there's a tall spruce and a rather elegant oak tree which will make a really good final crop. It is a straight tree but the one thing wrong with it is that its crown is restricted. And so what we want to do is to remove one or possibly both of the neighbouring trees either side. Now as the owner of this wood I think what I will do is to mark the hornbeam which is a good wood for firewood but this wood is full of hornbeam coppice so we will take that tree and that will help the oak to develop its branches uh, over towards these other conifers. So we'll go over and we'll now do a mark on the hornbeam tree. We will put that blaze on it. And that is all that is sufficient to mark your trees. So the first tree we marked was one that was dead or perhaps it might have been a diseased tree which is good to take. The second tree we have marked is one that is interfering with a really important tree that we want to grow on because we want to grow really good oak timber and that is the tree that's just next to it. In five or six years time when this operation ought to be done again and the next thinning is due probably we would take the spruce tree on the other side of the oak to give it yet more space. When you have marked all of those trees, the dead, the dying, the diseased trees, the ones that are interfering with the good ones, you might then just select a few others to make up to your rule of thumb that we mentioned at the beginning, the one in three. And so you might just quickly go back through your woodland, your stand of trees and take out a few more to make it rather more even. Who comes and cuts these trees? Because for most of us who own our own small woods, this is far too big for us to be able to cope with with a handsaw. Obviously it's a chainsaw job and therefore you need to have a trained person. And a contractor would be interested in coming into this wood, seeing the ones that have been marked and he would or she would give um, a quote to say I am prepared to pay so much per tree or so much per tonne of wood for the ones that you have marked with a blaze. That is why it is so important to have these blaze marks on so that the contractor knows. That has a technical name in forestry, it is called standing sail.
And it's the easiest way for a small owner to sell their trees. To invite a contractor in, look at the ones that have been marked for thinning, and then if they're interested, they can give you an offer. <laughs>